Before we dive in, just a reminder that Salesforce is a publicly traded company and you should make all purchasing decisions based on generally available product. I'm Stephanie Maddox, and this is Luke and Mun Simaral, and we're from the platform tooling teams. We help build the tools that you use to build on the platform. Today, we're going to take a quick look at how to use Salesforce DX using the awesome Salesforce extensions. The Salesforce IDE experience is built on the Visual Studio Code framework. VS Code is a lightweight, powerful, and free integrated development environment, or IDE, that was created by Microsoft. This allows us and many others to add tooling into this interface to further expand its capabilities. This is great for you because you can access Salesforce tooling in an industry standard IDE. And for us, we can focus our tooling efforts on things that are unique to Salesforce. Within the extensions, you have powerful language server capabilities like code completion, refactoring, and IntelliSense for Apex, LWC, SQL, and more. Also within the extensions, you have some point and click interfaces. So things like SQL Builder, if you want to build a SQL query with clicks, or Org Browser to navigate and find your metadata. The extensions also give you access to Salesforce-specific actions, things like deploy, retrieve, managing your metadata, or authenticating an org. All of that's bundled into that extensions pack. The IDE itself also gives you access to a marketplace of other extensions. So if you work with other products beyond Salesforce and you want to add community or third-party extensions, you can do that as well. There's two ways that you can access the Salesforce IDE experience. The first is using VS Code on your desktop. And the second is using Code Builder on the web. Code Builder is a Salesforce optimized IDE right in your browser. It's powered by AWS as a part of our partnership with them. And under the hood, it's built on the open source of VS Code. Code Builder brings the exact same Salesforce extension pack along with the CLI to your browser for you. With Code Builder, it's preloaded and set to go for you. So this is a great option for occasional users that just need to dip in sometimes and do a couple of things, or for users or contractors that have restrictions on what they can install locally. With Code Builder, you can access the same great IDE experience from the web without the setup or local installs. Code Builder even keeps the tooling up to date for you, so you don't have to worry about versions and maintenance. Each time you come back to Code Builder, we'll have refreshed it with the updates that we have to our tooling. So that's a little bit about what the IDE experience is. Now let's see what we can do with it, because that's the fun part, right? Luke, how about we dive into a demo? Will do. Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, so first, I've already pre-installed in my org the Code Builder uh, beta um, application. Here, it's a very simple launch button that will bring you into the Code Builder environment. Now this is exactly like VS Code on the desktop, except in your browser. And with that, we have our, down below, you'll see extensions, like we have our Einstein for developers. We have a org switcher down here that we can authorize other additional orgs that you care about, or in this case, I'm just using this DF demo org. And I'm gonna switch to that, make sure it's on. You can see I have my Git integration that also shows up on the sidebar. And I have, for my source control, you can see I have very little modifications right now. I'm clean, very relatively. You have your file explorer, which has all of your source code and your metadata. Uh, additionally, if I noticed that in Code Builder, it's a little different. You've got this hamburger icon. This will give you where your file edit and view uh, selections are. In the main area, this is where all the action happens. So where you view your files, make your edits, um, and all that sort of thing. So. The, my project here, I've loaded the eBikes uh, repository. You might have seen it in Trailhead and other demos. But here it is in action. And I'm just going to do a quick little refresh to look. Uh, we've got our, our bikes, um, our product lists. Uh, but I, I did hear that our, my QA is telling me that they're missing a badge. And so I need to troubleshoot what's going on. Why, why are we missing the availability badge on the products? So I'm going to go ahead and do a command shift C in Chrome, which opens the dev tools. I'm going to inspect on my component or the elements on the page. I'm going to try to find this component. And now if I'm not familiar with what 
custom component I've created or what the name is. I'm going over here. I see a div, but I'm going to scroll up until I see a C dash. That's for our custom namespace uh, component. You, it, in this case, this is a product tile. I'm going to go back to Code Builder. I'm going to use Command or Control if you're on Windows P. This is a quick file locator, and I can do a product tile, and I'm going to look at the HTML file first. Now, in this file, right at the top, I can see there's a lightning badge. And so we have a badge class. That seems fine. The status label. But this is gated on a template of if true status. So maybe something's going wrong here. I can command or control click on status, and that'll jump me directly to the definition. In here, I'm going to highlight just to get a quick visualization of where the variable is being used in the file. And I can see right above that it is set from value status. Now, just before we saw that the class was badge class, and it's doing a little JavaScript comparison here to set an SLDS or Salesforce Lightning Design System uh, class. So this looks right, but that just probably means the status isn't coming through. So I'm going to keep going up the chain, and, and I'm going to look where is the status coming from. It's set as an API. I know LWC, an API on product means that the parent component is going to be setting this file. So I'm going to go quickly back to my file, uh, to my to my web page, scroll up the chain a little bit more, look for my next C dash, and that's product tile list. So let's go do a, give another command P and go find my product tile list HTML. In here, if I was to search for a product tile, there it is. You can see it assigns product. What's product? Note, note I'm continuing to use highlight as an easy visual uh, to find references in the file. I can see that product was here in this iteration. So it's off of products, data, records. Maybe I can just con control click on that, and it'll take me to that definition. I can see now that this is a wire. And a wire in LWC means this is being fetched from uh, an Apex controller of some kind, or in this case, it is. I'm going to command click on that to find out what controller that is. And here I have found the product controller. So I'm going to command P, go to product controller class. That's my Apex class. And we've been trying to figure out what's going on. We, this is our get products method that was called from we're going to like chaining all the way through. Uh, I need to find what I'm going to go right to the bottom to see. OK, it returns this result. But I really cared about the products or the records. And it looks like I'm, again, using products here. And this is coming from a Sokol query. All right, so maybe I'm just missing some information. And maybe I don't quite know what the API shape of product is. So I'm going to try Sokol Builder real quick to, to see how that's going. I'm going to open the command palette by Command Shift P or Control on Windows. I'm going to just type in quickly Sokol. And that gives me some SFDX options. I'm going to choose this Create Query in Sokol Builder. Uh, here's a little point and click for you to build a Sokol. Uh, so I'm going to first go for my product object. I can select a field. I know the name. Name's probably something I can quickly identify. Uh, the other field I need to look for, it's right down here, status. Uh, that looks right. I'm going to confirm that this is exactly the data I want by running the query. And I can see my names, my statuses. And that looks, that looks right to me. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and close these files, because now uh, closing, it says, do I want to save? You can save these Sokol queries for later use and even reference in your uh, Apex files. I'm going to discard for now, but come back in here and just do a quick little addition. Save the file. Now, in, via, in Code Builder, I am running in a VM, but not in my org. So now I've got, it's just like running on the desktop. So when you're developing here, I need to get it to my source org. So I'm going to do the command palette again, command shift P, and deploy this source to org. And as that's running, 
we can see now it's successful in the, con in the output console. I'm going to go back to my page, close this, reload, and now I can see it. There it is, Stephanie. What do wow. you think? It's amazing. LWC development from the browser. I love it. <laughs> but you know, seeing it on the monitor, I wonder if we can make a quick tweak and maybe move that badge over to the right side. Can do. That's pretty easy. I know SLDS, Salesforce Lightning Design System, that is a very simple little class change on these files. I'm going to go back to my code builder. I can close up a whole bunch of these tabs. Oop. I can close them, but can't I? <laughs> you can do control back tick or command, yeah. Maybe. OK. One second. I'm just going to reload. There it goes. I didn't have my X for some reason. I'm going to close up these files that I don't care about at this moment. Uh, I'm coming back to my product tile. So this badge class, I can then, this is what I need to modify. I, and in line here, um, because it's a variable, I can't change it directly here. I'm going to go ahead and see how that's assigned by doing my uh, command click although it's still loading. So I can go product tile JS, find my badge class. Hi, Einstein. Find my badge class. It's being assigned right here, but I'm just going to add a very simple SLDS float right class. Oops. I need to put a little parentheses around here. As you see right now, there's a little blue squiggly line. And I'm going to try to figure out what's going on here. So if I highlight over this, I see that it's saying that the design token's outdated. And I should be using the newer just underscore instead of hyphen. So I'm going to fix that real quick. My blue squigglies go away. I can save command shift P for the palette to deploy. Now that's a recent command. So it's right here. I'm going to deploy the source to my org. As I'm watching that go, I can see here in the output that it was deployed was successful. But I, I just modified one file, but now there's multiple files here listed that were deployed to my org. That's because this was a Lightning Web Component bundle. And all of these files are linked together. So every time, you're going to be pushing all of them together, just so that um, we know, or at Salesforce knows, that these files are in sync with any modifications you've made. So I can come back here. I'm going to give a quick reload. And there it is on the right. Nice. Thanks for that quick change on the fly, Luke. I'm really digging it on, on the right-hand side. So Luke showed you just a few things that you can do with the Salesforce IDE experience. There's lots more you can check out. And if you haven't tried out the extensions before, you can hit up this QR code to dive straight into the docs. That'll get you all the info you need to set things up locally with VS Code or Code Builder. This month is the last month of the Code Builder beta before we move on to GA next month. So if you haven't checked out Code Builder yet, give it a try and give us your feedback this month. We'd love to hear from you. No matter which way you want to access it, it's the same extensions and the same CLI that you're using. So people on the team can choose whether they want to work on desktop or web. Either way, everyone on the team has access to the tools they need. And you can speak the same language because you're using the same interfaces. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs>